right, in our statics little review videos, we've done course overview and we've done the objects, and now we're going to deal with the last bit of loads. Specifically, we want to deal with moments. Remember, there were three different ways we used the word moment. The moment of the force at a point was the first one. And just as a sort of aside, what we're going to do, and we're going to talk about this more in a minute when we talk about equilibrium, but what we're going to talk about is that in equilibrium, we will pick a point and we're going to ask what moments exist on your object considering that point as the anchor. So one of the things that will feed into that is that any force acting at a distance causes a moment. So if you have a force on your free body diagram and the line of action of that force does not pass through the point you're taking your equations of equilibrium about, then you're going to have to consider the moment from that force at that point. That being said, make sure that the distance you're taking this about is perpendicular. So we've got the magnitude of the moment of a force at a point is simply the force times the perpendicular distance. In a problem like this, this one's pretty easy, that means your perpendicular distance is 6, your force magnitude is 50, and you've got a nice 300 newton meter clockwise moment at this point. And we talked about it different ways that you could write that all down. Whatever it is, the point is you've got to deal with the moment of a force at a point. And just like we can do this with a scalar method, we can also do it with a vector method. If you do not have a bunch of zeros in your components, especially when we get to 3D, what we're going to usually do is take the cross product of R and F. What you need to make sure that you're doing is measuring R from the point you're taking your moment about to the point of application of the force. This is R. So the moment at O due to F has to be with R going from O to A. As soon as you have multiple non-zero components in either R or F, the vector method is easier. If that's not the case, the scalar method is usually easier. The second way of dealing with a moment or coming up with a moment that might act at your point is when you're given a couple or an applied moment. So a couple is, by definition, two forces, equal in magnitude, opposite direction, with parallel lines of action separated by distance d, which is much harder to say than it is to look at this picture. F, F, they're the same F, they're in opposite directions, and they have some line difference d between their lines of action. The point of that is that no matter where you take this moment about, A, B, C, or in fact point O over here, the magnitude of the couple due to these two forces will be the same. It's going to be F times D. So that's a, cu a couple. An applied moment shows up on your beam. It looks like a rounded arrow and has units of moments. Moments have units of force times distance. So an applied moment in the background, you might think of this as that somewhere along the way there are two forces, F, that are creating this moment, M. However you want to think about it, those are two ways that you will get things that add into your sum of the moments equations. And the third way is to have a reaction moment. Remember that the ground down here is going to resist the reaction moment from these, that couple and this couple. Both of those red and blue pairs of arrows are couples that would tend to tip this over clockwise. So the ground is going to have to give you a counterclockwise reaction moment that we put down here and we call a reaction moment or whatever you want to call it. Those are your three ways of getting moments and when you come to summing the moments what you will take is a point and you need to sum up the moments due to any force not acting at that point, so where the line of action is not going through this point, any couples applied or given to you as two forces, and any reaction moments.